Welcome back at Haha ha Tonka State Park. Today, I'm doing the last trail on my list. Turkey Pen Hollow, 6.5 miles, rugged trail. It's gonna be a long day. weather today it's supposed to get up to around 90 but uh, the humidity is not supposed to be as bad so I hoping it's not just a bunch of video of me panting and sweating all the time but you never know um, 77 right now I got everything loaded up I brought a ton of water because the trail six and a half miles I'm not gonna be able to easily get back to the car and resupply so I've got lots of snacks I got lots of water with me and my bottle of Gatorade so I'm down here at the visitor center and I'm getting ready to head off to the trailhead. All right, here we are. Turkey Pen Hollow. You are here. Somewhere, where am I? Oh, I'm right down, way down there. Big trailhead today. So the parking area here is pretty nice. It's pretty busy today. Lots of cars, um, lots of trails start from here actually. And we've got a really nice little area here that talks about the area, talks about the trails. Um, here we start with the Oak Woodland Interpretive Trail, the Acorn Trail, and Devil's Kitchen Trail, and then Turkey Pen Hollow. It's interesting, the trail says it's 6.5 miles on the map, but it's 6.75 miles here at the trail sign. So. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what it is uh, when it's all done. I'm tracking it with my, my GPS watch. Looks like I'll be following red blazes today. Starts off pretty nice. Just like all these trails. We start going up, it seems like. It's the first of my trail junctions. I continue going straight. Acorn Trail goes off this direction. So I'm at another trail juncture here. Devil's Kitchen, blazed in brown. I've already come up that trail. And if you look up here on this tree, is a red blaze. And we start right here with a, a decision to make. Now usually the white sections are trail connectors. And it looks like, I'm not sure, I already have to go to the map. Whether I follow that little trail, that would be the connector. Not sure about that one. Well, according to the map, this is a loop so I'm gonna follow down this direction. The sign is, and then uh, come back around the other side. And here we go again, another decision. I'm gonna continue forward. I have not seen any red blazes since I took this little spur. So we'll let the misadventures begin. Oh, I think a murder hornet just flew by. I don't know if I got that on camera. Well, it's definitely getting warmer out. Um, I just left that open area. And now I'm in some shade. Without the humidity, this shade is really nice. It's pretty cool still. We'll see. I'll be on this trail most of the day. So uh, hopefully it just doesn't get too hot. I got lots of water with me. Bottle of Gatorade and plenty of things to help keep me hydrated. And plenty of snacks. And look at this. I'm feeling better already. There my red blaze so I'm on the right trail so come into the trees here and 
it's, just, it's like you're on a, a ridge. Slopes down on both sides. The geography here is so amazing. Uh, I actually live in Nebraska, so, you know, we see a lot of hardwood areas out there. Um, so we can get into the trees and do some hiking, but it's nothing like this. Um, and this is a welcome change, a welcome challenge. Um, this will be my last hike at Hahatanka State Park. I hit all of the major trails. I've got videos for all of the ones I've been on. And uh, so it'll be a little bit of a sad day when I get off this trail. So I'm not planning on coming back here for any hikes for a while. But I am a member of a, a Missouri hiking group on Facebook. And I put a post out for recommendations of other places to hike around here. And I've gotten some good suggestions. So I've got other places I'm going to go and start exploring. Looks like my little ridge trail here. It's definitely steep on both sides. Um, starts to go up. Just more switchbacks and more hills. Oh, just came from there. Now I'm heading, heading up still. Every time I think I'm at the top and I hit a corner, I look and then it's up. Oh boy, good exercise. So I think I'm at the top. At least I hope so. I probably just jinxed myself, so we'll see. But it looks like it flattens out a little bit up ahead. Well, I did jinx myself. Still going up, but I'm happy about this. Still see the red blazes, so I'm on the right trail. So maybe now I'm at the top. I'm at uh, 0.84 miles, 320 feet of uh, ascension so that's uh that's a lot it's almost like it's just constant uphill um for about the first mile but uh stopped got some gatorade did see one other person on this trail i continue to see the the red blazes so i know i'm on track so far i haven't seen anything that they would call rugged uh, the island trail was rugged and boy, in spots, it was really rugged. So I'm sure I'll run into that later on on the trail. Guess I should be happy these first miles are relatively easy. If anybody's curious about the gear I'm using, I brought a bigger pack. Today I have the Ibex 26 made by VanQuest. It's a 26 liter pack. Plenty of room for everything for a long day hike like this. Um, my other hikes, I've been using a VanQuest Katara 16, 16 liter pack that's, uh, that's good for short little day hikes. I usually keep that in the car just for that, for the spur of the moment hikes and outings. But on a day like today where I knew I would be carrying a lot more water and food, I thought that uh, taking a bigger pack was going to be the way to go. And a nice little sign for me to tell me that I've gone one mile. Huh. Well, 5.75 to go. At least I'm on a downhill right now. Look at this view. Definitely up in the treetops here. Really opens up down here. So this trail is uh, it's a lot of loose rocks coming down. So I'm definitely glad I have my poles. And this stuff is real pretty easy to slip on or lose your balance on. So having a trekking pole really helps keep you stable, keep you from falling down if you slip a little bit. And back down into the trees. A little shade, a little bit of a breeze. Just what I needed here. There's a little rock outcropping here.
Somebody set up a Karen out here. One and a half miles. Oh, here comes a bench. It's kind of nice. Grab my towel out of my pack up here. It's a good idea. It's a little bit low to the ground there. All right, and there's a, a connection here. I'm not sure what trail that is, but it says my red blazes are going that way. I'm gonna want my towel. That is right in here. I think I'm gonna have some of that nice cold water. And look at my phone, look at the map there to see where I'm at. such a treat. And this thing does a good job of keeping ice all day. I've got a couple of the big water bottles in here. Um, a Nelgene silo bottle and then a standard 32 ounce. So I can always top off the ice with some more water if I need it. into the little open field here came down the trail came across this it's like a little dried out stream bed and I'm ready to go back up the trail all right there are three campsites out here campsite a apparently is down that path if you want to call it a path um, I don't think I'm gonna go look at them I don't know if there's people at them don't want to disturb anybody the trail goes on there. Some amazing rock formations down here. And some water as well. Just been going along these little stream beds. Bunch of rocks. And I've come up to my next sign. 2.5 miles. Right next to a tree that looks like a toilet bowl. And moving on. Four miles to go. I swear this trail is straight up. I hit another section. It's just been switchbacks and switchbacks and switchbacks. I hate switchbacks. Oh. Let's see. My total ascent is up to 522 feet. Just under three miles I should see the three mile sign pretty soon been out here for an hour and 42 minutes that's not bad I made a couple stops uh, to have some water take a little break decided I would throw out my little sit pad sit on the rocks I'll wait for this breeze to come through which is just starting oh so nice Maybe have something to eat, a little snack, get my energy reserves replenished, and then uh, and then I gotta continue going up, up the hill, up the trail. I figured this was a nice wide spot, kind of a, I don't know if there's a service road here or something, but uh, this is a good spot for me to sit off the side of the trail. So if anybody comes by, I have seen a surprising amount of people. Um, it's nice seeing a lot of younger people, college kids out here hiking, enjoying the trails, all very friendly. One thing I took out of this pack that I usually have in it is my hammock and my hammock straps. And I'll tell you, I wish I had them, but I know if I were to set up a hammock and take a little 
afternoon nap in the trees, I'd probably wake up at dusk. I have a long way to hike out. So it's probably a good thing I don't have it. Going through my little food bag, looking for my Rice Krispie bar. I think I left it at home. Hmm. Or maybe in the car. Well, that's sad. So my snack is going to be some Blue Diamond almonds. And I don't know if you like coconut, but these are delicious. Three miles in, one liter down. Nice little break. Now it's time to get up and get back on the trail. All loaded up, ready to head down the trail. Actually, head up the trail. That's how it pretty much is on this trail, all up. Fork in the trail, this must be where that service road goes off. Here's my marker. Nice breeze going through these trees. Back in the shade, at least for a little bit. So the trail met back up with the service road. So I'm back on this nice wide trail. Pretty easy to walk on. And I'm 3.38 miles according to the GPS. So I'm, uh, I think I'm officially over halfway, which is good. Looks like I'm coming up on a sign. Not sure what this is. Looks like there's a connector trail here. So, wow. Okay, so this is a shortcut. So, if we take the regular trail, seven miles total, and the backpack camp is located along the way, the shortcut shortens to five mile. And you can see here on the map where the shortcut is, this white connector trail. Um, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to go ahead and take the full trail. That's what I'm here for. Here's my three and a half mile sign. This part of the trail is pretty easy. Not too rocky. can carry my poles and let my handles dry out from all the sweat from the hill climbing. And there's a nice breeze through here. Since I finished that uh, bottle of water, that one liter bottle of water, you can definitely tell. It reduced the weight of the pack a lot, which is nice. Um, I got plenty of water to do the full loop, so I'm not worried about running out. Boy, I'm uh, going down a lot here. So. I'm not looking forward to having to go back up to get out of here. Still continuing down this Turkey Pen Hollow Trail. I've actually hit mile four, which is good. Um, this is the full loop section, so it's going to be seven miles probably when I'm done. Um, so far, this trail's been really nice, easy walking. Um, there was a lot of downhill, so there's probably going to be some uphill coming up. But uh, it's really nice out here. Not a lot of people on this section. We just came down a real steep hill. And here's this uh, this stream bed. Just spring-fed, crystal clear water. And the trail continues up there. So uh, I was coming down. Sorry about the lighting. So I was coming down one of those hills, and uh, boy, I needed my poles bad. <laughs> um, lots of loose rock, very steep. And uh, yeah, I almost took a nice tumble down there. I planted my pole and I caught myself, but I think I found the rugged part of this trail. Now to move on. I know I'll be getting close to uh, campsite B. I think that's the one that's coming up, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look at that. I'll take the little offshoot to go see 
what these campsites look like. They're pretty far back in here. It'd be a, be a fun hike to camp in and stay overnight back in this area. Just came down off that trail, kind of following this, this dry riverbed. This is just so peaceful out here. These rocks, I'm sure that when this has water running, it's just right up next to these, these boulders here. It's beautiful. All right, so I took a little break here at this, this dry riverbed, and uh, there's a nice, nice log here that I gotta hop over. But it makes a great place to oh, sit and rest and rehydrate. So I did look at the map, and I'm about as far out as this trail goes. So it curves back, heading back towards the parking lot up here. I still have, boy, at least three, maybe three and a half miles to get back to the car. But uh, it's beautiful out here. It's quiet. There's been a nice breeze today. It is still pretty hot, but it's not as humid as it's been when I've been out here before, so great park. I'm really enjoying this trail. I'll tell you this about this trail. I have not had any problem finding my red blazes as uh, I walk along. There are some spider webs down here. I'm not sure if anybody's taken this section, so every once in a while I gotta clear the path between some trees. I'm far enough back here that I don't really hear any road noise or any of the boats. So, that's good. It's very peaceful. Such a gentle breeze here. Coming up on another one of my signs. 4.5 miles. So if that's accurate, which I have no doubt that it is. <laughs> um, seven miles total. So, not much further to go, right? Two and a half miles, maybe three, we'll see. I'd love to be down here if this river was flowing. So, the trail Kind of merges with the riverbed. You always gotta look out for things like this. I stepped on this rock. Not very sturdy. You always gotta watch your footing. A lot of people in the Missouri hiking group, I get camping and hiking group on Facebook, have uh, have commented that this is their favorite trail, and I can see why. There's some beautiful, beautiful rock formations down here, and you're uh, you're far away from the roads and the little cove where the spring is, so you're not constantly hearing boats and cars. It's just it's a very peaceful, beautiful area. And now I'm heading up, getting out of the out of the hollow. I'm walking on this trail, and I look over here, and it almost looks like there's a big slab or stone or something. Hopefully, I'll be able to see what it is up here if it clears a little, or maybe not. Still looking for campsite B or C. I'd like to take a look at one of those. Just 
a huge rock. Another dried up little stream bed. I would say this is a rugged section of the trail. I do a little climbing to get up there. I almost missed this one. Five miles out of the hollow and walking alongside the little field here full of flowers. All right, here's an arrow to a campsite. Uh, it doesn't say which one it is. I'm thinking it's campsite B. Uh, I kind of like to go check it out. So let's go. Let's go see. Hopefully nobody's there and we disturb them. Oh, there it is. Campsite B. It is down across this stream. Well, it's a ways back here. Lots of spider webs back here. But this is nice. Look at this. Big open area. Campsite B. There's uh, rocks to sit on. Nice flat area for a tent. Uh, nice fire pit. Um, and if there was water in the stream, you'd have a water source. That's nice. I think I'm going to sit here and rehydrate while I'm here. Campsite B. Um, pretty nice. Nice little area. Boy, you could put, I don't know, three or four tents back here, I think. I don't know. sure what the restrictions are on it. Big fire pit. Um, nice little open area. There was that dried stream right by here. It'd be nice if there were water in it. But... This is nice. I'm going to rehydrate before I trek back out to the main trail. Also look at the map before I go. I had to open up my big silo bottle from Nalgene. 48 ounces of water. So, just starting on this one. One thing I have noticed here about this campsite is I can hear the breeze. And I look up and I see the trees moving. But you can't feel the breeze down here. Time to leave campsite B. Rehydrated, took a look around. Very nice area, nice campsite. And uh, I gotta make my way back to the main trail. And it's uphill, of course. And I'm back to the main trail here after visiting campsite B. B. So I'm gonna continue on, make my way back to the car. I know there's a third campsite, campsite C, which should be up here between me and the parking lot. And I don't think I'll go in and look at that one. I'm sure they're all about the same. Just came up a little bit of a hill there. Goes back down, you can see the trail goes all the way up there. I'm not looking forward to that. Here's my 5.5 mile sign. Still going up. It feels like the last mile has just been up, up, up. So here is the connector in the trail for campsite C. So we're going to head back to the trailhead. All right, right there. So one and a third mile is what it says. And hopefully it's all downhill. Mile six, one mile left. 6.5, half a mile ago. Oh, it is downhill on this side, which is still a lot of effort just to make sure you don't slide down these hills. Well, this last mile and a half, two miles have been grueling, but look at this. I'm, I'm back, I'm back to where the trail split off for Turkey Pen Hollow, so. Now it's back to the parking area. Shouldn't be too far. I can see the parking lot 
I'm almost to my car where I'm gonna enjoy some air conditioning, some cool water, and uh, get out of my hiking boots, get back into my little boat shoes. But uh, it's been a great hike on this trail. I saw, I saw three people heading up with full packs as I was coming out, so I'm gonna check to see the, uh, the camper register to see if they're camping overnight and which site they picked. Um, just curious. It's kind of first come, first serve basis. I don't think you can reserve these. So it's uh, it's kind of neat that they, they have those back in there. They are all a challenge to get to. But, uh, oh wow, all three sites are booked for today. That was a great trail. Um, getting down into the, the hollow was really, really cool. I highly recommend that. You can shorten the trail to only five miles. Um, if you don't want to go down there, if you do, it's, it takes you up to seven. So I'm not sure where they came up with the 6.7 or 6.75 miles on the sign or the 6.5 miles from the, uh, uh, the map. Wow. My brain is just fried after this one. Um, I got 7.35, so I'm thinking it's, it's seven miles. That 0.35 would have been probably me going off trail or going on that little side trail to look at campsite B. So, um, great place. Haha Tonka really surprised me. I saw amazing sights on every trail I went on. Um, if you haven't seen my other videos in my series of my misadventures at Haha Tonka State Park, I highly recommend it. I think it's uh, it's good stuff. It gives you a good view of uh, what it's like to be out on those trails and what things you're going to see. So, thanks again for watching, everybody. I really enjoyed making this series. And uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.